Hey guys and welcome back to another big ticket farming episode. Now today we are going to be in Stranglethorn Vale and we are going to be looking for the Hyacinth Macaw pet. Now this pet is worth about 50,000 on EU realms on average and is incredibly rare so in of itself it would be worthy of a big ticket item farming video however it is actually only one of a few big ticket drops that we're after today this is the biggest of the drops that we're after but there is also a second pet the Rezashi hatchling that can drop from any mob in this zone as well as quite a few nice transmog pieces most notably being a few hats now all of these items that we're looking for are zone drops well, in the case of the hats, it's actually just mobs of the appropriate level, which all of these are. But the other two, the two battle pets, are zone drops for Stranglethorn Vale. Now, this means that you can kill any mob in Stranglethorn Vale and have a small chance of acquiring these items. Now, there is no variance from mob to mob as to the likelihood of getting this. So, what you want to do is be killing as many mobs as possible. So to that end, we are going to be killing the lesser water elementals that you find on this unnamed island to the northwest of Stranglethorn. Now, these lesser water elementals are quest mobs, and as a result, they can trigger a hyper spawn if you are able to kill enough of them. You are able to do this farm solo, as you see me doing here, but as always, any farm in the open world that involves hyper spawning that can be done in multiple people groups should be done in multiple people groups ideally up to five this is just simply going to mean that you get to get as many kills as possible and increase your likelihood of getting these rare drops now acquiring a group for doing this farm did prove to be quite challenging for me and if it does prove to be challenging for you also i would suggest going to the location and beginning solo farming while having yourself listed in the group finder if you don't get anybody you won't have wasted your time trying to get a group you'll still be farming solo and if anyone pops up along the way, this farm is simply the more people, the better. There is no minimum number of people. So even if you only get one person after a little while join, it is going to just improve your efficiency that little bit more. And you can just continually add people as they come and go and you continue your farming. Now, if you are a regular watcher of this series, you will know that when I find these farms, I do like to find ones that have steady and consistent gold in order to make up for when your RNG is poor and you do not get the big drops, and this is no exception. These lesser water elementals can drop Essence of Water, which, depending on your realm, can sell for about 500 gold each. Now, these are going to drop very frequently, in my experience, I tend to get one roughly every 10 mobs, but you can track these figures for yourself by watching the footage going on. Now, when it comes to getting to this farm, it's actually rather simple. It does vary depending on what class and faction you are playing, but I'll give you a quick rundown of each. If you are playing a druid, my preferred method of getting to this location is to use my Dreamwalk ability and then take the portal that takes you to Duskwood, at which point you just fly narrowly south and you will arrive at your destination. If you are playing as an alliance character, it is as simple as getting yourself to Stormwind, which you have numerous means of doing, and then flying south from there. If you are playing Horde, then you would want to get yourself to Orgrimmar and take the Zeppelin to Stranglethorn Vale and fly slightly north. The map is up on screen for you here, as it will have been earlier on in the video, to let you know where you want to go to accomplish this farm. Now, these essences of water that drop from these mobs are also mirrored by the globes of water and the elemental water that can drop as well in adding to your consistent gold. Now, the reason I mention these separately is that for the majority of people, these items are of little to no value and will be vended. However, there are some recipes that use them that can create transmogs that can sell of for decent value. And also the items themselves, depending on your realm, can sell for some amount of gold, but that is definitely going to be realm dependent and something you will have to check for yourself as to whether it is viable when you are doing this farm. Now, because this farm is primarily going to be aiming at getting those battle pets, it does mean that of course this farm can be accomplished on your primary realm and with the items that you are farming being sold on a secondary realm to get you started with some initial working gold 
that can help you start on a new realm. One other point of note is that, as we alluded to earlier, these mobs are for a low level quest and as a result you will have a lot of low level characters that are also in the area killing these mobs for their quest. And this is both helpful to you and also leads to a slight problem for you. The slight problem being that you could find yourself being very inconsiderate and killing all of the mobs that you, these low level players need for completing of their quest. However, it does also mean that these low level players will be killing the odd mob or two, which will be helping your hyper spawning rates. Particularly if you follow with what tended to happen to me, in that you would orientate yourself to this mountainous region at the lower end of the aisle, and then to be out of your way and be able to get consistent mobs, the players who were here for the quest would be finding themselves on the northernmost part of the aisle, killing mobs that you otherwise wouldn't have killed and this will increase the respawn rate of all of the mobs on the island, including the ones that you are killing. So please do be considerate to the fact that other people are just simply trying to level off of these mobs and complete their quests, and don't be going and not letting them finish. If you do, you're just going to find yourself cluttered with a large number of people sending you angry whispers because they can't complete their quests. Now when it comes to the looted item value I was able to attain in the brief period that I had this farm for, which is something people have been asking for a better rundown of in these videos. I was coming away with roughly 1000 gold a minute that I was able to gather at my realm's prices for doing this farm. Now things to be considered are the fact that I play on a relatively high pop realm, which means that all of these items have a considerably lower value for me than they do on average. For example, the Essence of Water, which is the biggest factor in that sum of money that I came away with, is worth about 350 gold for me, and that might not necessarily be true for you. Another big factor, of course, is the fact that in the 20 minutes I did this farm for, I was solo for the entire time, and I also didn't get any lucky drops with regards to battle pets or rare transmogs. So, in my experience which of course is subject to variance by realm and other factors i was able to come away with 1000 gold per minute while accomplishing this farm with very little luck in terms of rng so i think it's reasonably safe to say that if you are reasonably consistent in your farming and you don't allow mobs to despawn with loot on them or you don't find yourself trapped on a rock or anything unable to make the most of your time, you can come away with 60,000 gold an hour minimum value from doing this farm, which is pretty good considering the fact that most of that value is going to sell. There were very little in the way of transmog items in that value of mine, but of course it could be considerably better if I was killing a lot more mobs by the use of having multiple people and also if I had better luck in attaining any of the rare drops that we were here for. The final point I wish to make of this farm is what else is nearby, and that is quite a notable point for this farm, as the Zorga Rub instance is right across the zone. You are very close indeed, and as a result this farm is something that is excellent to do in your downtime while waiting for your instance lockout to reset if you are farming the Zorga Rub instance, be it for the my items mentioned in our skin into gold cap video or if you are doing it for the volatiles that you can acquire from the first optional boss into the left of the instance when you first transition through the portal if you do find yourself at lockout while doing this you can just of course come over here and do this farm until your lockout expires meaning you have very little downtime without adding much in the way of travel time to your farm but that's going to about wrap it up for this video guys, I do hope you enjoyed it, if you did please do consider giving the video a like, it does help out a lot, and if you want to be kept up to date with the next videos in this series please do consider subscribing to the channel. But for now guys, that'll do it, and I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next one. Later!